Webhav and Mark are still with us. Webhav, uh, let me ask you, you know, when you're talking about the underperformance here in India, a few sectors have tried to sort of come to the forefront. Uh, there's IT to some extent. Consumer names have actually held out pretty well over the last few days. Your, you know, ITCs of the world or even uh, Lever for that matter, Titan today. Uh, do they find a place on the long, shy, uh, long side or the short side in your portfolio? Yeah, I think from a uh, you know IT sector perspective, uh, we've seen some nice bounce back uh, in Nasdaq, uh, primarily because of the uh, you know possibly terminal rate, which we may pretty I mean clear you know we may see shortly on the US uh, side, and because of which we have seen some amount of rebound in that. We have got some good correlation with the Nasdaq with the IT performance. Uh, and that is why we've seen some amount of, uh, you know, a recovery from their low levels. Having said that, in terms of the revenue, when we talk about in an environment where global growth is getting, you know, uh, downgraded, our sense is basically if uh, revenue pressures come about on these companies, uh, you might start to see some amount of underperformance again. But we'll have to wait and see, uh, you know, on that. So that is where our uh, view, especially on the IT, with respect to consumer companies, uh, I think, uh, as I mentioned, consumer staples looked pretty decent. And after this whole correction in terms of consumer discretionary, if there is a, uh, you know, if there is a possibility of revival in consumer spending, uh, we may see these stocks kind of getting bottomed out. But I think that for that, we need to first wait and see the data, how it is panning out. Uh, Webham, any segments of the market where you are currently underweight or you've gone short in your portfolio? So in terms of underweight, right, we, we are not very comfortable with the metal and mining space purely because, again, back off saying that the global growth uh, kind of will get downgraded uh, and the China recovery is not having, uh, uh, you know, substantial impact on the metal prices. So there is, that's a pocket we may probably see underperforming for a while. And especially on a thematic basis, the stressed companies or the business models which are weaker is something which you would ideally be kind of, uh, you know, uh, underperformer on. So in that respect, pharma is also one of those sectors where from a bottom-up perspective, there are opportunities to uh, to remain underweight. All right. Uh, well, uh, Web of Hold On. Uh, Mark, what about the other big event uh, today is we're getting the jobs report. Is it a done deal now that... Peak, peak interest rate hikes are behind us, going by the commentary that we got earlier this week as well. 25 bits done. How many more are you baking in, and what are your expectations from the jobs report today? We're not expecting any more rate hikes from the U.S., despite Chairman Powell trying to, you know, say otherwise. Uh, so um, I think that, you know, we are, however, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with uh, these uh, rate hikes around the world. The Bank of Canada said they've stopped uh, raising their rates. And uh, I think Mexico and Brazil did some time ago. So the market is telling you that the rate hikes are just about done. And uh, as for the jobs, uh, I think it'll still be a strong number, but uh, that's fine. Uh, inflation is coming down. By the way, I just want to point out that there's a big surge now underway in the market. We're at the day's high. For the better part, the market was kind of just struggling to remain positive. The second half has turned out to be much better. Right now, it's 150 points up on the Nifty. Uh, what's leading it? By the way, a couple of the Adani stocks, as we've been mentioning, there's been a very sharp reversal. Adani Ports, in particular, stands out. There's a 5% up move on that one. Uh, the banks have, of course, been leading from the front today. HDFC Bank, SBI ahead of its numbers, up to 2.5%. And some of the other uh, major names like Infosys also pitching in. So all in all, it's looking like a good screen at this point in time. Uh, Mark, uh, uh, was there uh, any sort of game changer for you in the budget in terms of uh, specific outlook on either uh, sort of any sector or any theme in India? Or do you think it's just the overall direction that, that uh, sort of you were looking at? Nothing that surprised us, uh, except for the fact the fiscal deficit will remain about the same as it did last year. And we, like the rest of the market, thought that um, they would narrow the fiscal deficit. Um, but um, that's not really a game changer. Um, to my mind, uh, uh, there wasn't anything very surprising in the budget. Mm. <clears throat> the other problem, guys, is earnings have been, uh, I think, uh, more down than up, right, mm. uh, through the quarter. Uh, and uh, it is, uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll put out a piece later, maybe, uh, you know, uh, coming Monday, looking at the aggregate nifty earnings in terms of how estimates for 24 have changed. And I... Uh, would strongly suspect that the numbers are, uh, you know, th there are there are uh, maybe meaningful down, uh, downgrades. 
uh, which are uh, which which have happened. And if you expand the universe, not just Nifty Fifty, but you look at slightly uh, larger group of companies, NSE two hundred, which will include a lot of the well-owned uh, sort of liquid uh, consumer names, which are not part of the Nifty. I think there it would be even sharper, uh, actually. So it'll be interesting to see uh, that aspect also. Mark, I don't know if you have any uh, thoughts uh, on uh, the how the earnings. I know it's you know, bottom up and very, very micro. I know your broader view is very bullish India, uh, but uh, there is there is a slowdown, especially in you know in the lower strata. There is a fair bit of slowdown. We had the management of Titan, for example, joining us, uh, who spoke about it, and so many other companies uh, have been telling us that. Your sense? Yeah, I'm sorry, Prashant, I, I can't really comment on it, but the only thing I can say is that earnings historically have been among the most lagging of indicators, right along with stuff like GDP. So the analysts um, and the earnings uh, don't tend to be what moves the market. The market's always thinking six to 12 months forward. Um, I can't say much more than that. I apologize. Just look at, though, the earnings coming out of the U.S., which have been think fairly mediocre and and so is the guidance but that hasn't stopped the market from going up because the market's already starting to think about the second half of this year mm. no, I got that uh Weber, any thoughts on the earnings bit have you guys looked at the numbers etc how are 24 estimates moving see i think uh, you know uh, earning estimates in my view uh, would probably get downgraded uh, you know of course this year we've seen some downgrade but for 24 as well uh, as you start seeing, you know, weakness from the global side, uh, you know, continuing. So, uh, as against whatever uh, you know consensus forecast is, my sense is basically we would be lower by about three to four percent from the you know, you know consensus forecast. Uh, so uh, that there would be you know likely some amount of pressure. But in in spite of that, I think uh, uh, even if you grow anywhere between you know, 12 to 15 percent in terms of the earnings, I think that would be pretty decent and a you know decent number. Given that, uh, you know, from a PE perspective, we've corrected from the highs, and from a relative valuation perspective as well, vis-a-vis uh, -vis your emerging markets and vis-a-vis -vis, you know other indices globally, I think we are back to almost mean. So in that respect, I think uh, you know we should start seeing some amount of uh, you know uh, flow coming back. Uh, on the back of, uh, you know, good, decent uh, earnings performance. Okay, so before we let both of you gentlemen go, Mark, I'll go back to that, uh, you know, positive statement that you made on India, that we should see at least a 10% up move in the calendar year. Uh, if that were to be the case, what part of the market, what, you know, section of stocks do you think will lead it? Well, I, I just sound like a broken record, but... Um, the, the sector that we have liked for some time now is banks, and Adani doesn't really change that very much. I mean, a little bit maybe for the PSU banks, but they weren't our preference anyway. So banks, but having said that, there's been such a, a lot of uh, price changes, and I must confess I've been traveling during most of this. So, so it may well be that given some of these big corrections in prices, uh, that, uh, that it's time to look at some of the beaten up stuff. But I can't really speak on behalf of my company because I've been traveling, uh, so I apologize for that. All right. Actually, you know, when it comes to earnings, it's the consumption pack <laughs> where it's been weak. You know, yeah. barring a one-off, right? Asian Paints was weak. That was hit on account of that monsoon in October. Pidilite, the volume growth was 1%, expectation 3 to 4. Jubilant Food Works, right? Like-to-like -like sales growth was less than 1%. Uh, Colgate was weak. So across the board, Titan margins were under pressure. So barring of, you know, there were a few exceptions, like HUL was not bad, but broadly, the consumption pack had reported a fairly weak, uh, you know, Q3. Just, and that's why you've seen some earnings just, downgrades. You know, just one more point on Adani Enterprise. Whenever you see a stock falls 35%, you see it has to make up 55% to get back to break even. Mm. Both of that has happened today. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Adani that's... Enterprises is down 35%. It's made up the 55% from the lows and it's It's in the flat. green now, yeah. right? <laughs> it's, it's in the green and uh, that is quite something. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, is today the climactic kind of price